Hey guys, welcome to that 1870s homestead. My name's Rachel. And I'm Todd. And something that we have yet to become sustainable about is lunch meat. It is something that we buy almost every single week. Mm -hmm. We love deli sandwiches. And um, it's something that I wanted to get away from that dependence on and teach ourselves how to slice our own deli meats, make our own deli meats. and. If you guys are a frequent scroller like I am of reels and all the fun things out there, I saw a woman use this contraption the other day and make her own turkey deli meat. And I was like, <laughs> bye now. And we, cause we have and raise our own turkey and we have so much turkey in the freezer. So we're gonna try making our own deli meat today. Are you excited? I am, I'm still, I haven't seen the reels that you have seen. <laughs> Supposedly this thing is fantastic and it's going to come out amazing. So I'm a little bit curious. Curious. Skeptical. I don't know how it's going to turn out. We have two pounds of ground turkey that Rachel thought out this morning. It's basically just the turkeys that we raised. We deboned, deboned. them mm -hmm. and ground some of the meat. Some of it we cut whole. She's got some liquid smoke, some black pepper, garlic powder, mustard, paprika, honey from our bees, and some salt. Yes. And what else do we have? We have a little blender, we have a little magic tube, and a and big pot big of pot. water back behind us. Really all you need, I wouldn't, I mean, we're doing the blender just so we try to get that tightest consistency on the deli meat. I don't know that you have to have that. Um, it's just something that I'm going to specifically try for consistency purposes. Mm -hmm. um, but really, all you really have to have is this little doohickey in a pot of water. So, and then you can season it to your own preferences. Like I thought, you know, using some of your spicy peppers in it one time mm -hmm. might be really good with some brown sugar. Um, you could do like a tomato basil feta. Oh, wouldn't that be good? I was so, thinking some kind of a pickles. Yeah, a pickles in it to like make like a pickles. sandwich loaf. Yeah. yeah, all kinds of things. So once if this turns out, it's going to open up a world of <laughs> imagination in this kitchen. So I think the first thing that we need to get going is just blending the turkey. Okay. I'll give that job to you. Oh, thanks. Okay. <laughs> It's probably been almost 30 years since I put meat in a blender. One of the restaurants when I was younger that I used to work at, we used to make pâtés all the time. Well, not all the time. A couple times a year we would make pâtés. And it always seemed kind of weird when you're like blending raw meat. But then once you cook it, I mean, it, it can actually turn out pretty amazing. We'll just do maybe half for starters and see how this goes. So the second package almost looks like it's mostly dark meat and the first one was more of a white meat. And our little tiny blender <laughs> is not liking this task. So I'm gonna have to do this kind of slow and pulse. Okay, so I just got this all mixed together since it appeared like one package was dark meat, one package was more like breast. So it's all well and mixed. So let's go in with some seasonings. I'm gonna go in with a teaspoon of black, oh, no, no, no. Okay, sorry, this is paprika. Two teaspoons of paprika. A teaspoon of black pepper. And we'll go in with a teaspoon of onion powder. I think Todd said garlic salt earlier, but it's onion powder. And a teaspoon of ground mustard. And how much liquid smoke do you think, Todd? Not a ton. Just a teaspoon? Yeah, or half. Okay. Half. I'd say three quarters of a teaspoon. 
And then we'll go in with a good teaspoon of salt. And, oops, about a tablespoon of honey. And that's it. I'm gonna get in here and mix this all up and then I think we'll be ready to package it all together. So Rachel has the meat just about mixed up. We need to oil the inside of the canister. So I'm gonna use a little bit of bacon grease and kind of rub down the sides. And the bottom good. And the bottom, and then it'll be ready for packing the meat. Yeah, it's weird smelling bacon right now. <laughs> We're not even cooking bacon. You guys always keep, like us, where you always got a jar of bacon grease in your fridge. We always have one. All right, thank you for greasing the pot. We're gonna get this all loaded in. And then you use this little spring form and pack it down. And then it has a lid that locks on it and a little temperature probe place where you can put a temperature probe in it. And like we mentioned back behind us, we have the pot coming up to a good simmer. You don't want to boil it. You do want to simmer your meat. So I'm not bothering trying to pack like a ton as I'm putting it in there, but I am trying to get big air pockets out and the spring form should do the rest. Here we go. All right, so this is the little spring mechanism. We're gonna put this down in the meat. And this thing fits really tight in there. The tolerance is super small. The lid has some little locks on the side, so we can push this down on there through these little gaps on the side and then turn it and it's gonna lock in place. Like, there it goes. Now we can turn it. And then on the top, as it comes with a thermometer, we're gonna put that down into the meat. And then put this in our submarine water. And the temperature that we wanna to go to for most things, I think, is 160 degrees Fahrenheit, which we were looking at the little thermometer before we started, and it's in Celsius only. So 160 Fahrenheit is about 71 Celsius. So that's what we're gonna shoot for. Yep, I think it should take about an hour to an hour and a half. Hour to an hour and a half, okay. Yep. Here we go. Feels nice and heavy. And that's as simple as that. It doesn't have to come all the way to the top. You just need to submerge it. We do want to watch it and make sure that this does not come to a boil. So right now I have it at about a two setting on our stove. And then we'll come back probably in an hour and check what temperature we're at. Alrighty, it is done. It ended up going right at an hour and a half. That didn't get too hot. And there's no smell. I was wondering, would you smell anything? There's no smell at all. I mean, I think it would smell good. But we're not going to slice into this tonight. What we're going to do, and I don't know if you have to do this, is we're going to let this come down to cool down before we put it in the fridge put it in the fridge and then take it out tomorrow and slice it when it's cold. I think it might slice better is just my thinking. So we'll see you tomorrow when we slice into it. So it's the next day. This has been in the refrigerator since last night when I went to bed. We let it sit on the stove and just kind of cool down naturally in room temperature. It's nice and cold. And there's a lot of liquid on the top. Oh yeah, there is. Probably an inch, inch or so. Yep, so I'm gonna go to the sink, get this liquid off of there, try to pull this spring thing out, and then we'll come back and see if we can get this big hunk of meat out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I'll grab a knife while he's doing that, and we'll meet you back at the counter. Okay, I'm excited. <laughs> I think I'm prepared for it to look kind of yucky because that's kind of weird, right? You mush a bunch of meat together and you cook it in a tube. But once it's sliced, I think it'll look good. I'm also prepared that it's going to be maybe slimy on the outside. Slimy? Like the gelatin, you know, um, how that gets 
broth gets yeah, jiggly. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if like this was just mostly just turkey meat with not a lot of fat, so I don't know. When I started to pull the spring thing out, the the spring thing, I didn't oil this with bacon grease like I did the inside of the tube. So now the spring is stuck to the meat. But that's probably a good thing because then the meat came out with it. Yeah, it is like it. gelatinous broth inside of there. Yeah. Oh, okay. It smells. Fair. It smells really good. Yes, it does. Look at that. Kind of neat. But not, it did not like it has kind of grooves. Yeah, in I it. should have like packed it, it better, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. We're learning. Learning. Mm-hmm. Do you want to rinse this off before we start slicing everything? <laughs> sure. Okay. Yeah, it, it's hard. So I just got out my Pampered Chef mandolin that we're going to try slicing this with. And I'm not sure it's going to fit the whole width of this thing. I might have to invest in a little bit wider of a mandolin. But you got your pinky right down there. Be careful. And I got him the cut proof safety gloves out to use and he's not using them. <laughs> A slice of meat. Huh, it's kind of cutting it up, huh? Okay, there you go, maybe fast. Oh. It's definitely coming apart a little bit. Flavor is really good. It's definitely not the texture of lunch meat. It's more the texture of a sliced turkey breast. You know how lunch meat is like thin and pooly? Mm -hmm. I'm not getting that. I think it'll make like a really good panini, a really good like hot type turkey sandwich, but for a cold mayonnaise turkey sandwich, I would have to adjust my expectations. Yeah, and there's there are tons and tons and tons of different recipes out there. And a lot of them, or some of the ones that you found, call for adding gelatin mm -hmm. to the meat. And then, again, this was basically deboned turkey. Yep. So there was, like, zero fat mixed in with it. So I mean, some of it had fat. Maybe a small, small, yep. small amount. I definitely want to try a different type of meat or try adding something to it. Some yeah. fat, maybe trying the gelatin thing. Yeah, I think it's, I like it. I really am enjoying it. I don't want to give you the impression I'm not. I just, you guys don't <laughs> know how much I love my lunch meat sandwiches. I eat them just about every day for lunch. It is my go-to during summertime all year long. I mm -hmm. eat a sandwich with about 12 pickles on it. <laughs> <laughs> my lunch meat. And um, so I was hoping this was going to like be perfect. Not quite perfect, but we're going to continue to practice with it. And I think one thing is definitely a wider mandolin. Not, definitely not overcooking it. And then just honing in on that right recipe. Mm -hmm. I think we will try adding gelatin, like you said, next time. Yeah. And then we do have a proper like meat slicer down in the basement that we could break yeah, it's out. it's just really big to and, do such a small thing. Right. Interesting. Yeah. If you guys try it, or if you've tried it below and you have mm -hmm. tips and recipes, uh, leave it to us because, um, down in the comments, because I'm all in to keep investing and learning to use this. Yeah. We'll TikTok. leave a link to the to the container that that we bought on Amazon. If you want to try out that one in particular, I don't think there's going to be much difference between one or another's brand. It seems to be made somewhat well. The flavor of this recipe, though, is killer. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Really, really, really good. I wouldn't change anything. With I was just picturing that. like, what if we took um, a knife and we sliced a big, thick chunk? Mm -hmm put it on cast iron, put a piece of cheese on it, put it on some bread. Yeah, all right, I told him, I just got <laughs> home from work, I said, let's finish wrap up the video because I'm hungry and I want to eat. And this will be dinner tonight for us, for sure. <laughs> all right, thanks guys for coming with us today, just learning something new in the kitchen, trying out new ways to just be more sustainable from our own homestead. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully it inspires you to 
Find the things that you always buy at the grocery store and figure out how to make it from home. I really like the flavor. Yes, the flavor is great. It's good. See you guys.